Hello there, and welcome to my Endwalker waiting room. And no, this is not a guide. I've kind of run out of things I want to make guides about now, because everything will change in Endwalker. So let's save the guides for when we know what's worth making guides about. So until Endwalker releases, I'm just going to make random videos on FF14 topics I want to talk about. Let's talk about the peak of non-combat content in this game, housing. I've been wanting to talk about housing in particular for a while now, and with the recent changes announced during the last live letter, this is a good time to do so. The changes that were announced at the latest live letter are massive and will turn one of the most in-demand pieces of content in the game from a really, really shitty system that felt like you were always fighting against dozens of auto-clickers and botters into an equally frustrating system that makes you fight against the luck of hundreds of other players instead. If we were to classify housing in the same way we do combat content, this is what it looks like. Housing normal is buying a room inside your FC estate or apartment. Housing hard is finding the mental willpower to decorate your room or apartment so it doesn't look like you are a warrior of light living like a college student inside of a shitty dorm on a mattress without sheets and you're just TV like plonked on the ground. Uh, housing Extreme is learning a billion fucking glitches to place a piece of furniture on top of a different piece of furniture that isn't supposed to go on top there, and this is one of the most frustrating experiences in the game. Housing Savage is the current land plot acquisition system. It's the real PvP content in this game, because it's you against anywhere from 2 to 50 other people crowding around a fucking placard in a shitty small plot in the corner of the goblet somewhere, clicking for 14 hours in the hopes that the devaluation timer doesn't fuck you in the ass for more than 8 hours. For those unaware, you can't just buy a plot of land in this game. There's currently 4 housing areas available, and each has 24 wards. Each ward has 60 plots, so each server has 5,760 houses in total, or housing plots available. With the Imperium being added to Ishgard as a new housing area, this number will go up to 7,200 plots. Oh, While well, we don't have like official server population numbers, the estimates on FFXIV census are that populations range from in the low 40,000s on some JP servers, to over 100,000 players on the servers in North America and EU. That alone makes housing a scarce resource. I'm not even going to include FC rooms and apartments because I don't think they're worth talking about, because what's the point of having a house if I can't flex on my ward with my superior chocobo exterior and my PUTD trophy if no one can see it? If we assume that a server like Balmung gets over 100,000 players, or has over 100,000 players, then barely 7% of the population gets to own any real estate in the game. Should a plot of land become available, in the current system, it's not immediately available for purchase. Plots of land become available when someone transfers to a different server, if they fail to enter their house for more than 45 consecutive days, or if they willingly relinquish ownership to their plot in the first place. Now once the land is available, there's two timers that start. One is the publicly visible devaluation timer, which is like a red herring. A plot of land gets cheaper the longer it's available for, decreasing a few percent every 12 hours or so. The devaluation timer can theoretically be used to determine the time at which a plot of land went for sale in the first place, and that's all this really tells you. Some people believe that the devaluation timer is the time it takes for a house to become available for sale, and that's not what it is. The real timer that you need to care about is internal and not visible to the players and that's when the plot of land becomes actually available for purchase to the public. The highest chances of the plot being buyable are somewhere between 9 and 14 hours after it initially hits the market. Now what really pisses players off is the fact that if you already own a house, you can entirely bypass this hidden timer, or at least you'll be able to for the next few days until Endwalker hits. All you do is show up at the placard and you can relocate your estate to the vacant plot of land. So the strategy that most people, including me, employed over the last couple of months or years is to know life outside of a shitty plot that no one wants to buy, click the placard for hours until you, can, until you get lucky enough to buy the house, and then relocate to a nicer plot should one become available later down the road. This is basically the only way currently to get a medium or large size plot for majority of the servers by using the powers of relocation. Now, it goes without saying that this system is flawed as hell, and there have been many videos and articles and rants about it on Reddit. I can understand the logic behind the hidden timer for the vacant plots, 
It's to prevent people from buying and flipping plots or uh, or to combat people using housing for RMT sales. Uh, I get it. However, this hasn't prevented people from using the relocation system for profit in the first place. There's entire housing markets and communities on Reddit and Discord of people offering the nicest small plots like the beachfront ones in Shiragane or medium and large plots for relocation sale. I've had a look at the housing market discord servers and Heidelin almighty, y'all motherfuckers have too much gill over in NA. Medium and large houses are selling for hundreds of millions of gill. Holy shit. Anyway, this entire housing community or housing aftermarket and relocation system is going to die in just over a week. With N Walker, the relocation system is going away, and with the release of 6.1 and Ishgard Housing, an entirely new system is coming into the game. A fucking lottery of all the things. Which brings me to what Housing Ultimate would be. Your luck versus the luck of hundreds of other players. As revealed during the latest live letter, they're replacing the current system with a straight up lottery and you can only own one house per service account per server. So if you own a house, you can't make an infinite number of alts and then get more chances of winning the lottery. You can still enter the lottery, but only for relocation. There's going to be a gill barrier still for medium and large plots, since you can only enter the lottery if you have the gill to pay for the plot up front. I actually ran a poll on my YouTube community page a couple of months ago just to see how liquid players are in terms of gill. And with how poor majority of the player base seems to be, uh, a lot of people will struggle to even enter the lottery for a small plot. But of course, many people have more than 3.5 million gil, so there is still going to be hundreds of people entering the lottery for housing. So basically, buying a house in Final Fantasy is like buying a house in real life, except you can't take a mortgage. A lottery system has been suggested several times in the past by other content creators and by the big brains over at Reddit and Twitter, and I get it. Let's not even pretend like the old system was fair in any way. It is brutally obvious that there are people just straight up using external software to automate the placard clicking process outside of the houses, and they're not even being subtle about it. Not that they have to be, because I've never actually heard of Square Enix banning people or severely punishing anyone for using auto-clicking software to buy their houses. I can't even blame people for using third-party software to automate the fucking clicking, because if you have to spend 8, 10, 12, 14 hours standing in a shitty you know, location doing nothing but clicking the same placard with the same two button inputs over and over and over to even get a tiny chance at getting this house because you're competing with so many other people, it is mind-numbing, it is painful, and it really, really, really hurts when you don't get it because it feels like a massive waste of your time. It took me three attempts to buy my small plot, my first house, um, sitting outside of a shitty plot in the goblet for almost 14 hours. I even ended up using a controller in the game for the first time because it was easier for me to click the placard with one hand using a controller while keeping my other hand free to watch YouTube videos on my second monitor. Now what I did like about the old system to an extent is that even though it feels really shitty, it always felt like you had a chance. Like you could overcome it with either putting enough hours into enough attempts or with guilt. Of course, not everyone has the same capacity to sit in front of their PC or TV for 12 plus hours per attempt, but if you did, and if you're willing to do so several times, then you'd have a small chance, but still a chance, of winning a plot, of getting a house. Now, the gill aspect of this is if you already had a small shitty house and enough gill, you could go into one of these aftermarket communities and one of these housing communities and just throw gill at someone to sell you their plot. I know FC mates that bought their mediums and large plots from FCs that were server transferring, from FCs that were preparing to move to the Oceanic data center when it opens, from people that were desperate for gill and were selling their houses for cheap. But with a new system, it's all RNG baby. It's all gambling. Since you can only enter the lottery one plot at a time, you need to pick the plot that's the likeliest to have the fewest people entering the lottery for. It's interesting talking about this topic from my perspective because I've already reached housing endgame. I won't have to participate in all these lottery shenanigans unless I really feel like moving to a large plot or if there's a medium in the Imperium that really catches my eye. 
I'm the equivalent of a housing triple legend because I own a Shiragane beachfront medium plot. How did I get a medium house? Sheer, pure fucking luck. And I guess that speaks, or that says a lot about the, about the housing system in the first place. My friend Star Reaper frantically messaged me a couple of months ago, randomly at like 2 p.m., telling me to get my ass to Shiragane because the plot I mentioned I would love to own one day was available, miraculously. I rushed there and instantly relocated from my small plot, didn't even have to throw 50 million gil at someone on Discord. Of course, her generosity was somehow rewarded with good karma and she found another medium plot for herself a few weeks later down the road and she relocated to that as well, so you know, we got lucky, but many people don't. And my take on the lottery system as a whole is it's a step in the right direction, but it's not a great solution to a problem that Square Enix created with their spaghetti code. If I understood correctly, each housing ward exists on a separate physical server, which is a limiting factor in why there are only 7,200 plots available per, per server in the first place. And I feel like this should have been addressed much earlier with instance housing solutions or something similar, because it's obviously not a sustainable way for them to keep buying additional servers for housing. Now, with the new update, with the new expansion, we are going to have separate FC and personal wards and I don't know how that's going to play into the demand for housing. A lot of people want a house for their FC, but even more players want a house for themselves. So that'll be an interesting uh, chaos to observe. We don't know yet what the island sanctuary is going to be, but I personally doubt it's going to be a replacement for the current housing system or even the new housing system. Assuming it's instanced, I guess its downside might be that players can't see it unless you invite them to it. I don't really have a suggested solution for solving the housing problem, but maybe the island sanctuary can alleviate some of it or shift some of the demand for housing. We'll see. One thing I do want to touch on in this video is gill inflation as well. I mentioned that I was shocked at the prices that I saw houses sell in North America for, and I was like, but why? Why are things so expensive on, the, on these servers? Of course, it's supply and demand, but it's interesting to me because in Elemental, a lot of the market board and player economy seems to be based on what amounts of gill you can get from the game itself. Like a good example here is making money from leave quests. I know that people like using coffee beans, but real gamers like me prefer the Dwarven Mithril files because the profit margins are like 20% higher. If you average around 8k per file submitted, you submit 3 files per leave quest per day. That means you get 6 of them. So you do about 18 of them per day. Uh, if you don't miss a single day, you do this every day for the year, you just make over 52 million gil per year. And this is being nerfed, right? So if you did zero market board shenanigans, you know, if you had no other source of income, but the most efficient way the game generates money for you, which is, you know, leave quests. So after a year of doing nonstop leave quests, right? Or spending like what, half an hour per day doing them, you can barely afford a large plot, right? And there aren't that many other ways to make money in the game other than the player economy. So in servers like North America and some of the popular EU ones, where a lot of the prices seem very inflated, and there seems to be a lot more gill in the economy in the first place because of their, their larger player base and people just, you know, being more monetarily invested, um, more and more players will be able to enter the lottery for medium houses and for large plots, right? So these lotteries will become more competitive, more populated, and more RNG heavy. While on a JP server, you might have 10, 15 people competing for a large plot. I'm estimating there'll be hundreds trying to get large plots in North America, making housing even more exclusive, even more RNG, and now even less accessible because there is no more aftermarket. So overall, my take on the lottery is it's a good direction, but not a solution. It eliminates a lot of the really, really dumb, painful moments, but replaces them with pure, pure, pure luck. And of course, the current system is still very much luck dependent, but it always felt like you had a chance, right? You had a shot, you can try again. Now it's just like, you know, you submit your lottery ticket and you wait for a couple of days. And if you get lucky, you do. And if you don't, well, then you get your money back and you try again. Right, and uh, I'm not sure what this says about housing as a whole, but I do believe that uh, that housing is now truly ultimate content.
right? Housing is now ultimate. If it was if it was savage before, it's now ultimate level. And uh, for all the people out there aspiring to get a house, good luck. I'll be cheering you on from the sides, and I'll be laughing at the new players entering the game, realizing that housing in this game is end game, but also pure luck now. For those that have houses, welcome to the club of uh, a fairly exclusive subset of players now. And uh, I wish you all the best in Endwalker. That's all I have for you today. Thank you for listening to my housing rant. Um, I hope this was relatively entertaining. Um, I'll have more videos coming up with Endwalker. Maybe one, maybe two more. But then I'll see you guys in December for Endwalker. I hope you guys have fun. Feel free to drop by my Twitch stream. Twitch.tv slash And uh, see you guys soon. Peace.